All right, hey guys, I'm talking about renovation, extension, remodel, whatever you like to call it, but you'll notice that I have started to draw up a set of plans. I'm gonna show you how I got to here and what tips I can give you to help you uh, get more efficient at doing this. And the first thing I did is I actually started with a, a set of plans. So, and I was lucky enough to have a set of plans, but I always like to check that they are correct first. So over that set of plans, I actually redrew the house. And I actually used a, a laser measure. I'm not sure if you've got one of these. They are very handy because it saves you having two people to go and measure up. This one in particular actually has a, uh, a camera in it, which means that I can get more precise uh, with uh, whatever it is I'm measuring. And you'll notice that it's got a little camera on there and it tell me the distance to wherever the location is. And therefore, when I'm shining it across a room, I can zoom in, make sure I got that, that dimension correct. And essentially what I did with that is, let's see if I can just change this over for a second. You can see that I've written all the measurements in on my plan as I went. All of them pretty crucial when you're going to do what I'm about to do with this job, and that is cut into trusses, change structures, change load bearing points. Uh, so, so essentially, it was crucial that all of these measurements lined up. Now, fortunately, this house was built square, but it's not unusual for walls to be all over the shop, as you're probably aware, and you may have to even go back twice. So if you actually take a laptop along when you do it, you can actually do this on site. That way it saves you going, you know, half an hour, an hour home and back when you realize something doesn't line up. And, and I have done that before, so I do take a laptop to site just to do these basic type of drawings. Now from here, I really want to get into my 3D model so that I can start to figure out things. And you can see I haven't put my roof on yet. I haven't done anything, but what I did do is I started right. And if you watch my last video on workflow and how to do uh, create vignettes, you'll notice that I've actually done this, practice what I preach. So over here, I'll just turn those shadows off for a second so we can have a bit better look, is I measured up the concrete and the step downs and I just basically drew how it was built. I put my trusses in, I ensured that everything lined up the way that I expected it to, you know, with all my uh, bits and pieces. When I was happy with this, that this reflected what was in the house, I basically went and traced around the walls. Now every tool has its own tutorial inside of it guys, so look for the video tutorials at the top of every tool, uh, which is essentially uh, here. This one here will take you directly to a video and show you how to use that tool. So there's no point in me doing that today, just this is where I've got to. But there's some other things that I really wanted to talk about. This is my vignette, and I would probably save this for next time because it's kind of a common construction method. Uh, so I would save that by creating its component. You've seen that in my last video. However, from there, I also wanted to know what's going to be existing and what's going to be new. Now, if I go to my structural view here, you'll notice that some walls still have lining on them and the, the line is dotted, which makes it very easy for me to see what I'm going to pull out. And from an estimating point of view, when I go estimate now, it'll basically tell me what I'm going to throw in the bin and kind of demolition is usually one of the first stages we actually do. Right, so you can see that I've got um, demolition there and inside of demos tell me how much I'm going to throw in the bin basically uh, and that's really handy. But the rest of the house is not estimating because when I drew the walls, I drew them as existing and as I'm drawing everything, the concrete is, is existing and to explain that, uh, if I say, quickly just turn my mouse on so you can see the shortcut I'm using here. If I go Control A, you'll notice that I have things that are blue and these are new walls. So this is the proposed walls and I have things that are red. And when we draw anything inside of any tool, inside of Plusspec or Plus Design Build, you have the option to choose existing or you have the option to choose demolition. So I'll quickly just show you that, because you need to look out for it. If I clicked existing, it meant that essentially it's an existing wall, therefore don't quantify it. If it was demolition and I drew the wall, you'll notice that it actually turned it dotted. Therefore, we can really clearly see this is what's proposed. Now, some of this is going to come in and design. If you're designing and building your own homes uh, or extensions or renovations or remodels, you may want to design it uh, like I did in the other plan over here, whoops, here we go. And you'll notice that I've kind of gone, well, if I rip these out, you'll notice that I have some, some walls in here that are pink 
and they're actually what I signify as demolition. I have green, and then I have my red, which is existing. And what I did, I actually created uh, a tag, or in the old SketchUp, it used to be called layers. And when I click demolish off, it then turns those things off. And this is just more of a design thing. And then if I actually went in, you'll notice I've also got center lines in there, which is here. And that's so that I can figure out from my center how I'm gonna go about making the kitchen. I also have my paper size guides and I have my kitchen appliances just on and off because this is really preliminary. I wanna ensure that when I design and build this that it can be affordable to the client, in this case me. So anyway, let's get back over to here. Yeah. Okay, so clearly now I can see, now you'll notice I haven't put my windows and doors or anything in there and with a remodel or an extension, you don't really have to get too accurate with things you're never going to touch. It's only the only accuracy required is in the areas you're going to extend. The next thing is what about the ground level on the outside? You'll notice that I actually have this little triangle over here and, and what this is, I actually use my my distance measure. I'm see if I can show you this. Uh, and on the top of it, you'll notice that it has degrees in the top. And therefore, what I actually did is I stood on top of the veranda, I measured a distance up, and I actually took lines down on an angle, which enabled me to shoot an angle down. Right in that angle, I've drawn it inside a SketchUp, and it's given me a point or a reference. So then I can figure out where this ground is sloping and how to actually consider that slope, because in I'm thinking of having uh, a garage underneath an outdoor area here and I wanted to know whether I'm going to have the clearance to be able to do it. So as again guys, this is a really important tool that we use. And also you can buy cheaper ones of these things for under $100. Uh, however, I think you need to keep in mind what your uh, the value is to yourself. You know, if you buy cheap drills, you know, they don't last very long. This here is, is probably seven, six or seven years old. Um, uh, and having the camera, I must admit, is probably one of the best uses for it because I can do it by myself. So if you had to employ someone to come and measure up, it doesn't take long before you buy a better quality. So these are my ground levels, and now I can start to figure out when I'm going to design how I can go about actually um, figuring out where I can start my thing. And I could just use SketchUp and say, well, you know what, roughly, I'm just going to go six meters by six meters. And I've quickly just drawn that up because that would be a minimum garage size. And my minimum header height would be eight foot or 2400, enter. And therefore, if I grab this, I would now know how much soil I'm actually going to remove and how far I would have to go to put this before I started to encroach on the existing level. And the plan is the existing level. Which means from this geometry, I can start to create decks, roofs, and everything like that, and that's really important. And guys, as I said before, your tutorials are inside of every tool, but if you right click on a face or on anything, you'll notice that it comes up with items with a plus in front of it, which means if I wanted to go plus a window door, floor joist, ceiling, whatever it's going to be, you can just basically click on that and it will create from that geometry what it is that we require. So you can see I'm gonna create some joists here, uh, and go here, and I'll quickly put in my joist direction. It doesn't take long before I can start to say, oh, okay, if I do a deck there, how am I gonna seal underneath? Maybe I need to make it out of concrete. It's helping me make decisions as I go. So utilizing SketchUp in conjunction and using the geometry to measure up to enable you to trace is a workflow that is really worth investigating. Utilizing the takeoff as you go will start to give us a better indication of where we're at with price. Now this one is going to be a reasonably complicated job. I am going to cut through trusses. I am going to do it in there. I'm going to have a big turret going through the roof to let light in and a whole other thing. So, so stay tuned to this series if you're into extension, renovation, remodel work, because I think it's going to really help you explain to your clients what you're going to deliver, but more importantly, explain to yourself what you're going to build, understand how you're going to build it and quantify what you've done so that you don't go to the client with look at this great concept, but unfortunately it's outside of your budget. Anyway guys, uh, as I said, uh, if you like the video, push like. If you dislike the video, push dislike, tell us why. And if you wanna see more on this subject or you want me to explain a little bit more of the, the detail, by all means ask the questions below. I look forward to hearing from you guys and uh, I wanna see you all be efficient 
uh, productive builders. Cheers.